And with whom in the bioinformatic field have you published a lot? And Professor Nakai has published a number of papers with Minoru Tanisha, with Professor Satoru Miyanu, and with John Louis Ler in Paris. So Professor Nakai, thank you for coming here, and we're glad to have you here. Uh, uh, can, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, please, please. Thank you, Amos. Uh, so, I am very happy to be here, and uh, I'd like to thank the, all the organizers of the uh, of this, uh, especially Amos, for inviting me to this uh, memorial meeting uh, that celebrates the 20th uh, anniversary of Swiss fraud. And 20 years ago, I was much thinner than now, and I was at that time I was the only the first year uh, master course student of Professor Minoru Kaneshita's laboratory. And uh, since then, my research uh, interest has always been to develop computational methods to interpret the biological content uh, written in biological sequences. But I soon realized that the uh, world of biology is very uh, complex and uh, full, of, uh, full of exceptions. And so it is very difficult to, uh, to do it I mean, interpret it uh, with a simple algorithm or a simple knowledge. And uh, some years later, I uh, became to know that there, in 17, 1970s, there was a, a computer program called MySIP. Uh, the program was uh, could uh, diagnose patients on the presence of bacterial infections, uh, like a doctor, that, like a doctor. Now, uh, as you can see in this slide, uh, the computer program asked me, uh, various questions to a patient, and uh, like exactly like the doctors do. And uh, after a series of questions, uh, it leads to a conclusion that the infection is. Uh, this kind of disease and uh, suggest some, recommend some uh, treatments like this. And uh, you, you can imagine that the, like a doctor, the system should know, need to know uh, much, uh, much uh, profound knowledge on various disease, diseases and their symptoms and features. And that, that was uh, represented by having, by let the system have the uh, kind of knowledge base. The knowledge base, uh, in, in my scene system, the knowledge base was represented as a collection of if then type rules. And the, originally it, it is written in a computer language such as RISP, but uh, the, in a its English meaning was like that. The, if the gram strain of, uh, of the, the organism, uh, uh, blah, 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 then the uh, genus uh, is bacteroids. And with the certainty factor, the, that this value uh, shows the uh, certainty uh, that when we draw some conclusion using this rule. And the system had a lot of this kind of rules. And the, in, in more general senses, uh, the, such kind of systems have been, were called expert systems because the system has the knowledge of, domain knowledge of experts in some fields. And, uh, in many cases, the system was comprised of three First, the one is the knowledge base uh, that contains various kinds, uh, many uh, kinds of uh, if-then type rules. And the another module is the inference engine. And the remain, 
remaining part is called working memory. And the working memory reflects the uh, situation of the reasoning. And the inference engine part um, tries to choose the most appropriate uh, rule that match to the situation of the working memory and choose one rule from the uh, knowledge base and choosing one rule uh, will modify the content of working memory and then uh, the inf inference engine it tries to choose another rule then the, there will be a chain of uh, select cho chosen rules that means that the uh, system reasoned something to solve the problem. And uh, my idea was to uh, use this kind of uh, system to uh, interpret the biological sequence. The, you know that the, the doctors will diagnose patients using various knowledge on various uh, diseases and their symptoms. And the right very similarly, the system should could uh, examine the various sequence sequence features and draw some conclusion. And as a typical uh, example, I chose a problem of prediction of sub cellular localization. Uh, that was uh, you know that in eukaryotic cells there are many kinds of uh, membrane bounded compartments called organelles. And uh, each of the organelles plays some uh, specific sub uh, cellular roles. And this kind of function uh, is represented by a set of proteins that are specifically localized to each compartment. And so the, if you can uh, predict or know the uh, pre uh, ro predict the sub cellular localization information, uh, you that such kind of uh, knowledge will be useful to infer its cellular function. And uh, besides some exceptions, most proteins are in, the information. Mo most proteins are encoded in nuclear DNA, and uh, they are first synthesized in, in the cytosol, and then they are transported to each. Uh, of the organelle with a uh, fixed, some de well defined uh, pathways. And uh, again, uh, besides some exceptions, more, the information of their final uh, localization sites is usually uh, encoded in as a part of their amino acid sequences. And they are called sorting signals and various kinds of uh, sorting signals have been uh, elucidated. Uh, but uh, as I told earlier, uh, the world of biology is full of exceptions. And so, for example, that many, not, not all mitochondrial proteins have such kind of mitochondrial targeting signals. And so such kind of exceptional proteins will be uh, targeted to mitochondrion uh, with uh, different pathways. So uh, it is difficult to uh, predict all the localization sites of a proteome with this kind of knowledge, typical knowledge. And the, so with that, to overcome this problem, I used uh, I, use, I had to use additional information. The, such kind of, as an additional information, I used the information of amino acid composition. Uh, it is uh, not guaranteed that uh, each uh, protein in, a, uh, in, a, oh, in an organelle should have a uh, typical amino acid composition. But uh, as a practice, I found that many uh, proteins uh, in a certain organelle tend to have a characteristic amino acid C, uh, composition pattern. Uh, in this example, it was a uh, uh, typ uh, typical and uh, classical example of the uh, amino acid composition between the um, 
outer membrane proteins and the periplasmic proteins of gram negative bacteria that were uh, plotted with the uh, its principal components two principal components and uh, <coughs> such kind of knowledge uh, has been later used by various uh, researchers to develop their own predictors because such kind of information uh, can be very suitable for uh, applying various machine learning algorithms. And uh, using such kind of uh, typical knowledge on protein sorting, protein sorting signals and uh, amino acid composition information, I uh, constructed a system called PSOT, that means uh, protein sorting. Uh, it was an uh, export system uh, ha having about 100 epidemic type rules. Uh, that was, uh, it could uh, examine the various features of proteins, uh, amino acids, given amino acid sequence, and uh, draw some conclusion on their final subcellular localization with some certainty factor. And uh, then I uh, published the results uh, in 1991 and we, 1992. The uh, only uh, very few people were interested in it, but uh, later the, the age of uh, genome sequencing came and uh, gradually uh, more and more people were uh, interested in this system. And uh, so I, I say that uh, it is a very old program. Uh, it was uh, the eukaryotic version of PSOT was uh, published in 1992. But uh, I am happy to know that even now that uh, some there are many people uh, who are uh, who support for PSOT, and, and, and I found that uh, thanks to Thanks to these supporters, I, I found that uh, in this year, uh, we had 34 citations of this uh, paper. And, uh, but uh, like other systems, uh, PSOT had also uh, various kinds of limitations. The first one, uh, first limitation was that uh, it's uh, relatively low accuracy. Uh, because of that, uh, it is difficult to use PSOT for in an uh, automatic annotation system. But uh, I, I'd like to say that uh, this uh, low accuracy uh, is largely due to the complexity of the uh, actual protein sorting signal within the cell. And the second and the third limitations are related to each other. The, as I showed earlier, the, each rule has a, a certainty factor that a numeric uh, factor. But uh, that such kind of factors need to be uh, optimized to give the system maxim uh, maximum prediction accuracy. So it's a very compl complicated task. And uh, so, so it is, although uh, with the, the age of uh, large scale sequencing, the number of training seek data, that, that means the sequence of amino acid sequence with known subcellular localization site uh, are growing more and more. But uh, it was difficult to uh, use the, the update, uh, updated training data to uh, up improve the prediction accuracy of PSOT because it is uh, very complex and uh, tidy task. And uh, the second and third limitation problems were not only to the PSOT, but also to common to the all artificial intelligence uh, problems. So uh, the, I regard that the, the mainstream of the uh, machine uh, inference has shifted to the uh, field of machine learning uh, that uh, enables that enables the uh, optimization automatically and uh, uh, PSOT, in PSOT also 
the my collaborator, Dr. Paul Horton, was interested in apply, trying various uh, kinds of algorithms of machine learning for the prediction of subcellular localization sites. And uh, the, according to his conclusion, we adapted a uh, very simple algorithm called K nearest neighbor algorithm to, uh, for the prediction of subcellular localization sites. The new version of PSOT is called PSOT2, and uh, it is still uh, used by very many people. Some people still uh, says that they still uh, prefer PSO, original PSOT, but uh, PSOT2 is implemented in uh, more in a common language for, and that can run, so the system can run various uh, machines. And later, uh, various people uh, uh, kindly contributed to the development of PSOT. Uh, for example, uh, there is a uh, IP sort. The IP sort is uh, developed by Van Nuys et al. And uh, it is somewhat different with other P sort because it only tries to uh, find the presence or absence of known uh, sorting signals, like a uh, more famous uh, program, P, uh, Target P. The target P tries to find the presence or absence of the three kinds of uh, sorting signals. And the, the, the IP sort system holds the same training data with uh, target P, but uh, target P use, is developed using the technique of artificial neural networks. The, using the, the artificial new, neural net, networks, uh, it is very difficult to interpret what has been done uh, internally of the to draw its conclusion. So the we uh, claim that the IP sort uh, will can do almost the same thing with the more easy to understand rules, and these rules were uh, automatically uh, derived our with our uh, it's a search process. And so using these kind of rules, we could uh, find the presence or absence of the three kinds of sorting signals. And another contribution to the PSO, to, P, to the PSO project was done by a Canadian group uh, headed by uh, Dr. Fiona Brinkman. Uh, they developed an updated version of PSOT for bacterial sequences. The name, the, this version of PSOT is called PSOT B, and uh, they also developed a website named PSOT.org. And the latest version of PSOT uh, was developed by uh, Dr. Paul Houghton again, and uh, it is the uh, updated version of PSOT for eukaryotic proteins. And the originally, uh, Paul Houghton uh, meant that OOF, the name of the OOF means uh, weights of uh, learned features or something, but uh, now it has no meaning. It doesn't make sense. So uh, he suggests a new interpretation of the name, uh, we mean only love fools. And uh, <clears throat> now, uh, as Amos said, the uh, proteoman uh, came, and uh, we uh, that the amount of training data is growing rapidly. And uh, to improve the uh, prediction accuracy, we need more uh, training data. So we are welcome to uh, use more and more training data. But uh, of course, uh, if we uh, we know the all local, subcellular localization sites of yeast proteins, uh, the uh, its practical practical value will be degraded. So uh, it's a dilemma. Uh, and uh, another dilemma is that uh, mo 
it has been uh, about 15 years since I first developed the original P-Sort. But and uh, since then, there was a uh, great advances in cell biology, and much knowledge has been accumulated. Nevertheless, uh, such kind of knowledge are not very, is not very effective to raising the prediction accuracy significantly. Uh, because the, uh, these, this, these kind of knowledge, uh, often minor or, uh, knowledge about exceptional cases. So, uh, it is difficult. I, mm. that was not what I expected. When I, uh, first, uh, developed the, uh, piece of, I expected to include more and more new knowledge and, uh, improve the prediction accuracy, but it was not so easy. And the, such kind of pro problem is common to uh, various fields in sequence analysis. In, for example, gene finding uh, problem. Uh, you know that uh, the algorithm of gene finding is far from perfect, but uh, we now come to know mo almost all of genes uh, because of comparative uh, genomics or uh, functional genomics uh, projects. So. Uh, the problem is that knowing the answer of a problem before we become to know how to solve it. And so uh, I'd like to propose that the new generation pre predictors uh, should uh, uh, have these kinds of features. The first, the, the new generation predictors should be useful to engineer proteins for controlling their targeting sites. In the second, the predictor should complement errors of proteome analysis. Uh, now this problem, uh, Amos already discussed. The proteome analysis is not perfect. And uh, I think that uh, the predictive methods and proteome methods could uh, complement each other. And the third one is, uh, because we almost know all the answers, it is meaningless to uh, gain a bit more, uh, well, better accuracy with, with some, uh, statistical features. So, uh, I, what I uh, want is an, uh, uh, extensively, uh, example based analysis, the, like uh, the knowledge base I first mentioned. So, uh, the, uh, in this age, uh, modern age or the future, in the age of systems biology, I want, I think that the, uh, my first idea of using knowledge base to, for the interpretation of biological sequences may have a new, uh, implication. The, I, like many other people, I feel that biology is like linguistics. The living systems and, uh, Natural languages are both born naturally and uh, are full of uh, exceptions and have uh, developed, uh, evolved in a very complex way. So there may not be uh, general uh, principles that can explain these words uh, clearly. So what we need to do is to uh, construct a large dictionary, uh, maybe Oxford English, like Oxford English dictionary, the, for each item of the dictionary, the dic uh, it, not only the description of, uh, for example, protein, but also the information of usage is important, I think. And, uh, the use, if we comprehensively uh, correct the information, of a protein is, uh, in, in fact, uh, conditions, the proteins are used will be the most important thing. And uh, I expect that such kind of uh, database will evolve into a knowledge base. Uh, I mean that, uh, that the knowledge base can be uh, used for uh, automatic learning, uh, automatic reasoning 
of cellular processes. That, that is a so, sort of uh, simulation that uh, many systems biology are imagining. Uh, imagi imagining. So uh, I think that future of sequence analysis will become like an, uh, DNA linguistics. So uh, this is the uh, was the my talk and first present. I talked about first and present and future of uh, subcellular localization. First, it was an expert system based pro predictions, and the present was uh, uh, various kinds of machine learning predictions. But in the future, maybe the idea of knowledge based analysis will become. Important again. Okay, uh, that's it. Thank you very much for your attention. So, are there any questions? Can you please repeat this mic? Thank you. There are several cases where, except of the final destination of the protein, the final localization, it's the pathway that localizes the protein that counts. Yes. How much is this taken into account in most predictive methods, both at the training phase and at the results phase, when oh. the results arrive to the user, if we know which is the pathway leading the protein to the compartment? Yeah, uh, the, mm, the, it is desirable that we know as much as accurate uh, about the uh, exact sorting pathways. The, but uh, mm, if the pre I all, also expect that if the uh, prediction system is accurate enough, uh, maybe we can uh, discriminate proteins that are uh, uh, localized with a general uh, very common pathway and uh, the exceptional uh, ones that are localized with uh, exceptional pathways. Is that what you asked? Yes, but I, I want to know at what level have we reached to have this information? Mostly at the results of the programs. Uh, Is it somehow automatic or an expert has to decide uh, uh, it is, uh, I don't, uh, it, mm, the, in, mo in most experiments, we only know the final localization and do not get the information of their pathways. So, uh, mm, it is, of course, we, uh, to develop a more better prediction systems, it, it is desirable to know the uh, details of the uh, sorting pathways. But uh, it, ma, even without that, I, I believe that we can uh, make some reasonable uh, reasoning, more or less. Thank you. And now the